continuing our discussion with uh, class D RF amplifiers. Now, uh, as we have discussed previously for class C amplifiers, we have seen the, uh, in principle, uh, their efficiency can reach up to 90%, uh, but uh, they're not meant for very high fidelity applications like audio applications. But over here in uh, class D amplifiers, uh, we can achieve 100% efficiency. Um, well, you see, um, uh, if you if you if you are implying, for example, uh, an active element like a JFET, like we have considered earlier for uh, the class C amplifier, you, you look over here. The, the JFET, once again, if they are being used as a, as switches in saturation regions, having a very small uh, on resistance, small R, okay, a very small resistance, small R, and then if you are uh, using them as a switch over here, okay. So let's say R is the on resistance and R is small. R, R is much, much less than, let's say, the load resistance, RL. Then uh, in principle, in principle, uh, the efficiency of a class D amplifier can be, can be you can achieve 100% efficiency, okay? So for example, over here, you need at least two switches uh, for class D amplifiers, but neither are supposed to support the simultaneous voltage and current. So it means, for example, in this configuration, you are using a center tap transformer and, uh, uh, over, over here, the configuration is, in, is a, is a, is a push-pull uh, configuration, complementary push-pull, such that, for example, if this transistor Q1 is on, okay, if Q1 is on, then Q2 is off. This is Q2, Q2 is off. So when Q2 is on, Q1 is off. So one is on, the other is off, okay. Uh, but uh, if you consider a very small resistance, for, uh, let's consider a simpler model over here, okay. See, for example, here we have a switch, and uh, whatever the current that flows from the single pole double throw switch configuration, uh, that's the same current that, that flows into the uh, load resistor RL. Is that right? So we have we have the series LCR circuit over here, just like over here. Uh, so what goes around is that uh, if you if you see the efficiency in any of the two cases, uh, for uh, this is a more practical case implying JFETs as, uh, as switches. So the efficiency over here is, is the power out, is the power out, which is the power at the load, divided by the total power, total power uh, available at the input of the circuit. So P total. And what is this P uh, total equal to? Uh, this is equal to uh, I square, for example, this is I square RL, the power, that is delivered to the load, this is the current I uh, divided by, divided by, this is the current I, okay? Series current I, series current I. So this, this, it's the same current over here as well. That's the series current I. And once the one, when uh, one of the JFET or Q1 or Q2 is conducting, it has a very small resistance R. So this current also flows through the same resistor, small R as the larger resistor RL. So we have the total, uh, power available, that is I square, I square small r plus, plus I square, I square RL, uh, I square RL, and what we see over here is, is RL divided by small r, which is the switching on resistance of a JFET, which is conducting this is R plus RL, okay? And when R is small, so when R is is much, much less than capital RL, you can see that uh, theoretically, this efficiency is is 100%, so this is equal to one, okay? So class T amplifiers uh, can have a very high fidelity response and uh, they, they can achieve 100% efficiency. Uh, so they're still better than class C amplifiers. So uh, here you see there are two uh, configurations uh, in A and B of the parts of the figure. So these are basically the series uh, resonant uh, class T amplifiers. So why they are resonant, you can see there is a, a parallel uh, LC combination over here. So you have LC over here, the same LC goes over here. This uh, You can use this uh, combination to select the the resonance of the series LC circuit, which is given by, uh, again, F resonance is uh, uh, one over 
2 pi this is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of lc and the combination of uh, you see uh, l and c the inductance and capacitance is going to give you a frequency at which the series circuit is, res is re will, will resonate such that at that frequency the combination is effectively short okay so if the in, in, a, in, a, in a parallel in, in a, sorry in a, in a series in a series rlc circuit series rlc circuit for example over here you have a uh, series RLC circuit, which is, let's say, uh, the input signal is is you, you apply the input signal at the resonance at the resonance. The equivalence, if you recall, is uh, then this circuit is equal to a short circuit. Okay, so it it lets this that frequency to pass through the series arm without any without any attenuation without any facing any inductive or capacitive reactance. So no reactance. Okay, so at uh, at the resonance frequency, the inductive and capacitive reactance they cancel, and so you have a you have a, a straight connection. It's a short circuit. So, uh, what resonance or what frequency that we wish to allow through is uh, normally is the um, if you, for example, if you are driving the signal over here, it's a square wave drive. Okay, it's a square wave. For example, over here we, we have a we have a single pole double throw switch. So I'll call it as SPDD. Uh, so once it is uh, it uh, it is alternately uh, it is commutating between this node which is VDC and the ground, so it produces uh, pulses. Okay, uh, pulses for so for half let's say for half of the time period this is VDC when the when the switch is at this node. Okay, and then when it goes to the ground you, you have nothing. So again VDC around and then the drive of the switch the drive of the switch is being controlled by a square wave okay by a square wave and uh, you see the the difference over here is uh, in these two configurations b is more practical version of uh, what is what is shown in part a uh, although both are switches but then the, in part b you can see a push pull configuration of jfats uh, through a center type transformer which are being driven in in 180 degree out of phase uh, so the difference is that you see over here we have uh, zero uh, bias over here. There's no DC component, so it's, it's, it's flat. So, if you consider uh, this as plus VDC by two, so let's call this plus VDC by two, the amplitude, and then in in, in the negative cycle we can we can say that we have this minus VDC by two. So what is the equivalence? What is the equivalence between two price signals? Well, uh, you see what the, the uh, what the switch is producing over here. It has a DC component. Okay, so for example, if you take the DC, let's call this the time period T. And if you if you recall how to calculate the average value, let's call this function as F T. Okay, and that F of T is a is a square train. Okay, of it consists of pulses V D C zero, V D C zero. So what you do is you calculate its average value. So F of T uh, dt. And then you are, since you are going to average it out over the entire time period, the time period over here you can see is t. So the integration limits are from 0 to t. And then over here the average is over the complete cycle. All right. So this gives you uh, this is VDC over the period of the half cycle. So you are going to integrate this over t by 2 to 0. Okay, t by 2 to 0. This is 1 over t, right? dt plus uh, 0 plus 0. So this thing is, uh, it comes out to be uh, VDC, VDC uh, t by 2t. Okay, the t in the denominator is it's coming from here. Right, so effectively the average value is is half VDC, it's half VDC. That's your average value, okay? Uh, so this average value is, is half VDC. It's one by two VDC. Um, you see, uh, in in the, the the other half cycle, the the actually the signal is is zero from T by two to capital T. So you don't need to bother about this interval. You have nothing at the switch output. Okay, so if you're going to 
take the average over 1 over t, it's still 0. Okay, so this is the average value. Well, where, where is this average value is gone? You see, uh, we have a, a, a coupling capacitor. It's, uh, the, the C, which is part of the LC series circuit, not only uh, helps in uh, uh, letting the or favoring the resonance frequency to pass through without adding attenuation, but it also couples it also couples the AC signal through the through the R load. Okay, so what it what it's going to do is it's, it's going to remove this DC value. It's going to remove this DC value, and at 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 the at the uh, <clears throat> at, at the output, uh, you won't have any uh, DC value. So it, it would be like it would be something like this. Okay, but that's not the entire picture because this LC is also is also going to favor some frequency. So let's say if this is going to be equal to omega L, okay. So two pi if two pi if two pi f resonance is my omega L, then you can see that only the first term is going to get through this uh, series R three circuit. So if this is equal to omega L, then only the only the first term goes through, and the rest terms, uh, which you, you know that. This is the Fourier series expansion of uh, square wave, which consists of third and the odd harmonics, fifth harmonics. So we are, we are not going to have a, any of those at the output. Okay, so we are going to retrieve the first only. So, so in a sense, in a sense, you are going to have at the output, at the output over here. You see the arrow over here. You are going to have a sinusoid, a perfect sinusoid of, it's of a single tone, which could be, let's say, omega L in this case. Okay. We'll be, we'll, be, we'll be having a sinusoid at the uh, at the output, right? So that that's the operation. That's the basic class D operation. So you have, a, for example, over here you have a single pole double throw switch. For example, over here, uh, this is more practical uh, way of representing a class D amplifier through saturated uh, JFET switches. So they can be driven in uh, out of phase so one when one is on, the other is off, and uh, with a very uh, small uh, finite resistance R, you can see the efficiency. The efficiency is is 100%. Okay. Efficiency is 100%. So uh, again, this LC, LC combination is going to uh, be as such that it's going to uh, favor a certain tonal frequency, so that at the output, at the output, you have a you have a sinusoid or only one frequency that is going to pass through at the load. And this is done in a in a 100% in efficient manner. So class D amplifiers are very high efficiency as compared to the other class C or class AB amplifiers. And then again, you're seeing that. You're having a, a complete sinusoid, so it's, it's also a very high fidelity, very high fidelity uh, amplifier, high fidelity amplifier. Unlike class C, in which you have a conduction angle which is even less than uh, 90 degrees or 60 degrees. Over here, you are, you're having a 360 conduction degree without any without any distortion. So uh, here we have an explanation of what I've said. So, for example, a single pole double throw switch produces a square wave voltage, right? So, for example, over here, single pole double throw switch is alternating VDC and zero. You are having a square wave voltage over here. So next, the series LC filter lets the fundamental sine wave component to reach to RL. So only uh, this fundamental component is uh, is allowed to is allowed to reach to RL. Okay. Uh, so this is my fundamental component omega L. You see. So this is a series uh, class T amplifier because you have this the LC series section in series with the with the switch over here, either the single pole double throw switch, the ideal case, or you can have a JFET as a switch. So the bottom of the switch could be connected to a negative supply, but but the ground will work over here. Okay, since the resonating capacitor provides the AC coupling, so you don't have any DC component. Which DC component? This DC component. So the output of the switch, switch which was having a, D, a DC of uh, VDC by two, VDC by two is gone. Okay, VDC by two is eliminated by a coupling capacitor over here. Okay, so this coupling capacitor is going to remove any DC component. So the real circuit is shown in figure B with two transistors uh, that form the switch. And this push-pull circuit, uh, it means the transistors which are driven out of phase. When one is on, the other is off. You can have JFETs as switches. So now uh, that's about the operation of the class D amplifier. So if, if you're interested to find the voltage, the amplitude of the voltage. So what is the voltage? Well, let, let, let's say this, this voltage is V peak. Now you understand that we are going to retrieve uh, a sinusoid, which is having a tone or a single frequency uh, of sinusoid. But uh, how to evaluate the the question is now 
how to evaluate the amplitude plus minus V peak of a sinusoid. For example, the, the output we have a function like uh, V peak, let's say V peak sine, the function is V peak sine of omega t. Omega is the frequency that uh, is being favored by the series series uh, LC resonant circuit. Okay, so what is V peak? How to find V peak? So now, uh, since the capacitor acts as a DC block, uh, we can consider the square wave to be symmetrical about zero. Okay, so okay, we are we are already considering the drive signal plus minus V DC. We are not considering any uh, DC over here. Okay, there is no DC here. The drive so it's zero. Uh, you see, if if you, if you if this drive if this DC was equal to V DC by two, okay, then we we will end up in the in the same signal like this, right? Because this is minus VDC by 2, this is plus VDC by 2. So if you're going to add minus VDC by 2, plus VDC by 2, you're going to shift this signal, shift this signal up by VDC by 2, and this is what you have, okay? So there, there are no negative ex excursions, uh, no negative extension of the signal. Uh, but again, uh, due to the coupling capacitor, there is no DC component of VDC by 2. Uh, okay, so the sleep delta circuit passes the fundamental sinusoid, okay, because that's its resonant frequency. So we can find the amplitude of the output sine wave, the amplitude of the sine wave, by creating the DC input power to the sine wave output power. Well, what is the DC input power and what is the, uh, call it, average uh, load power, okay? So how, how would you find load power? You see, load power is the output at uh, the load RL, and that can be given as in terms of average uh that is okay uh so if you're going to calculate the average this will be v peak again v peak square sine square this is sine square omega t sine square omega t this is an averaging function divided by RL, okay? And uh, if you remember, the average of sine square theta is one over two, so the PL, PL can be written as V peak square, V peak square of two RL, okay? That's your average power. That is being delivered to the load, okay? So what we are, we're, what we are interested is, is to find what this V peak is, okay? So that, that's your average power being delivered to the load because you have a sinusoid wave, you have a sinusoid wave, and that's the average power, okay, V squared over R. Uh, it's two because this is the average of the sine squared theta is one by two. So uh, um, if there is no other lossy element besides RL, so if you are considering R, the on of the switch to be much, much less than RL, and for an efficiency or for an efficiency, that is 100% efficiency, efficiency is 100%. So, you're, so that means you are neglecting the small r, you're neglecting small r. Then the only lossy element, the only lossy element is RL, the load, okay? No other than, no other than uh, load, uh, there, there is no other lossy element besides RL. So there's no other lossy element. So since both voltages uh, and current change sign in the negative half cycle, so for example, you have, uh, uh, positive excursion of VDC by two and then minus VDC by two. So for example, in the negative region, the voltage is changing the sign, in the negative region, the current, which, which is flowing over here. What is the current? Current is, it's not hard to see. It's uh, actually, it's uh, uh, V peak, V peak sine omega by T. So we have a sine function over here divided by, divided by RL, okay, divided by RL. So, the entire thing divided by R. That's your current. Okay. So again, current is also sinusoid. Okay. So in in in, in, in the negative cycle, the current is going to change the sign. In the negative cycle, the voltage is going to change the sign. So in the negative half cycle, the power is the same, uh, and then the negative half cycle as as, as it's in the positive half cycle because the power is Vi. Okay, so if, if you're, you're going to consider a positive half cycle or a negative half cycle, power is again positive, and the magnitude stays the same. Okay, if the current is going to change the sign, the voltage is going to change the sign over here. So, but the average power remains the same. Fine. So what we are going to do is, if we neglect R over here, then your P in 
if there is no other lossy element, the only loss is the is at the load, and pin should be equal to PL. Okay, that 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 should that should be dictated by the conservation of energy. So, so if you are considering the input power equal the DC input power uh, equal to the uh, power at the load, uh, that is going to give you some picture of what the amplitude VP is. So let's consider this analytically. You see the the power delivered by the DC supply is the product of the square wave voltage VDC by two times the average of the positive current in the LCR. So we are considering the positive cycle over here, right? Of the current, which current? So this is VP, uh, VP by, by RL. Okay, it's not VP, VP by RL. So, so we are considering the positive half cycle only. And what is the average? Uh, if you recall, uh, for a for a sine function, let's say this is sine theta sine of theta over, so if you're going to degrade this with 2 pi, so no, no, with, with d theta, okay, and you're going to do this over a half cycle, 0 to pi, and average it out over 1 over pi, you see the average comes out to be 2 by pi, okay, this is 2 by pi, this is the average over uh, a positive loop of the cycle, okay, so one loop of the cycle, it's 2 pi, so this is 2 over pi times V peak RL. So this average is 2 pi pi multiplied by uh, V peak by RL. Okay, V peak by RL. Okay. So the current through the series LCS circuit can be written as uh, I peak over sine omega t and over the positive cycle the average is 2 by pi I peak. Okay. Which is equal to I peak is if you expand this in terms of V peak times VP over RL, so that, that's your average current over the positive cycle, over the positive cycle. So VP is the peak value of the sine wave voltage on the load. Now equating the power from the supply to the sine wave power on the load, over here you see we have the, this is the supply, okay, VDC by 2, and then on the positive excursion of the cycle, you have the average, so this, this, is, this product forms VI, so this is, this is the current in the positive cycle, so this is actually VI. Okay, isn't that right? And this VI should be equal to power delivered to the load. Power delivered to the load, considering a sinusoidal function uh, over the entire cycle, is V peak square over 2RL. And if you compare this expression with this expression, you can calculate V peak as 2VDC over pi. Okay, so if you are interested in calculating the magnitude, once the LC are so that 1 over square root of 1 over 2 pi square root LC, 1 over square root, uh, 1 over 2 pi square root LC produces uh, or favors uh, the resonance frequency which is equal to mega L. What is the magnitude? Okay, so what at the spectrum, what is the magnitude of V peak? So, what we are interested in was to evaluate the magnitude of V peak, okay, at the frequency, this is V peak, at frequency of mega L, let's say, right? That's the fundamental of uh, the square wave. So we know omega L, so omega um, uh, VP can be calculated by considering the the, uh, the energy conservation to the power input is the power delivered to the load. Okay, there is the, there is no other loss in the circuit. Uh, to estimate the loss, we assume that the FETs have a constant on resistance. So if you are going to uh, assume a very small on resistance, the current through the load passes through one or the other of the switches. So the ratio of the output power, that is the power delivered to the load, to the power uh, taken up by the switching resistor by the JFET. So this is this is the power uh, dissipated by an FET switch, P FET, having a small uh, resistance, small R. Okay, so that is I square over R. So total power is I square R plus capital R. Uh, since the, the circuit is in series, okay, so for example over here, the switch is in series with the LC circuit, over here again, Q1 is in series with LC, or similarly Q2, when Q2 is on, it is series, it's supplying it, this, uh, this supplying the LCR circuit, a series current I, uh, it's the same current, so you, you, you can cancel this current out, and you see this, uh, for example, you have um, an efficiency that approaches very close to 100% for very small R, right? So, however, um, besides um, very high efficiency of class D amplifiers and very um, 
very high fidelity output of a class D amplifier, there is uh, one more important source of loss in class D amplifiers. And that is that in each switching transistor, if you're considering transistors, they, have, they come with a parasitic capacitance. And this parasitic capacitance is a CDS, okay? That's a drain to source capacitor and which is, which is abruptly charged and discharged to the transistors resistance once per cycle so where we are considering this is you have a you have a you have a capacitance over here for example then you have a capacitance over here for q2 and these uh, these these uh, uh, capacitances they tend to charge up they tend to charge up for example when this transistor is conducting it charges up okay when this charges up and then it discharges then it discharges over time it charges up and discharges and you see the energy stored by a, by a by a by a capacitor is given by 1 over 2 cv square okay 1 over 2 cv square so um, here the energy lost is 1 by 2 cv square per transition so for the circuit series circuit of class t amplifier the switching loss will be 1 over 2 cv dc square multiplied by 4 where v is 2 VDC, so we have 4 VDC square. F is your uh, switching frequency, let's say, uh, if you're considering this uh, per cycle switching frequency. So for, for some practical values, let's say if F is 10 megahertz and uh, FET switches have 200 picofarad of parallel capacitance, uh, drain to source capacitance, uh, with a supply voltage of 200 volt, this will produce a 160 watts of loss of power. But how to alleviate this, how to uh, overcome this loss, is that we can, you can avoid this by using an alternate topology, which is better known as the parallel resonant uh, class D amplifier. Parallel means this, the switch is, is, is in parallel with the LCR configuration. So for example, over here, look, 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 at, look at this uh, class D parallel amplifier operation. You have the uh, double pole, I would say double pole, double, switch so if you consider this configuration the class D amplifier on the figure below consists of a square wave current source driving a parallel LCR circuit once again the drive of the switches is being controlled by a by a square wave drive so in the circuit of where there is a very large choke so this this is an RF choke and the, uh, the, the you, re, you recall the, uh, the purpose of the choke is to choke any AC signal and that through the DC signal as it is okay so this is J mega L, the inductive reactance at DC, you have a constant current. So it is providing a constant current at its terminal. So the DC choke is providing a constant terminal, constant current at its terminal. Um, so these switches, which are being controlled by uh, plus VDC zero or plus VDC zero on and off, on and off. So you will have this, you, 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 will, you, will, you will have the switches as, uh, a constant current source which is going to produce a square waveform at a parallel LCR circuit at a parallel LCR circuit so a double pole uh, double throw switch uh, commutates the load effectively forming a square wave current source over here so you will have it this, this is providing, providing a square wave current source to the parallel LCR circuit okay so the switching is as such so for example over here this is VDC uh, okay, when the switch is over here, this switch is over here, this switch is over here, so plus VDC, then minus VDC. So you are going to have this source is VDC, let's say, and the switch configuration is as such. And uh, this goes over here, so you can see that this is connected to plus VDC. So you would have plus VDC, and the bottom switch, once again, is over here. So this is, again, plus minus VDC. Uh, the potential difference is VDC. So when this switch comes down over here, and this switch is over here, uh, so we have a minus VDC source. We have a minus VDC source, minus VDC plus minus alternate VDC, okay, with the average of zero. The average is zero over here, right? So that's, that's the constant. It provides a constant current, uh, uh, and the switch is, is, is uh, the constant current is being provided by the, by the, by the choke, okay? Uh, but the double pole, double throw switch commutes the load effectively forming a square wave current source. So we have a square wave current source over here, right? We have a square wave current source at the input, plus VDC, minus VDC, and so on and so forth. Now, um, these are more practical uh, configurations of parallel uh, class T resonators, class T amplifier resonators. You see the in the first uh, uh, part A, you have four 
JFETs, uh, saturated switches. In the second, there are two JFETs. Uh, these arrows are showing the parasitic capacitance, CDS, the drain to source capacitance. So uh, the advantage of this configuration is that in parallel class T amplifier, the voltage on the on the parasitic capacitance of the transistors drain to source capacitance is CDS is zero. The voltage is zero at the instant when the switches are open or closed. Okay, so for example over here, uh, you, you know the operation is alternate. Okay, so when the switches are closed, when the switches are open, there is no voltage. So one over two CV square is zero over here. So thus there is no uh, lossy abrupt chargings or discharging of the parasitic capacitor. So uh, uh, we, they, again, you have a advantage of uh, the parallel resonant class T amplifier is that uh, at the instant when the switch is open or closed, you don't have any voltage V1 and V2, and your 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 loss due to the charging or discharging parasitic capacitor is zero over here, okay? Unlike series class D amplifier. 